AI is going to the next level. Hello, my friends, how are you doing? Today, I wanna to show you some major points from the NVIDIA Computex keynote, where they showed beautiful examples on how AI is used in the future. Now, one of the key elements here that you will see in all of these examples is that AI is being used in a way where we, the humans, create a sandbox environment. We create rules, and then the AI is acting inside of these rules, creating the final output. And this is a very very huge distinction from a final product that can't be changed afterwards. But now it is a playground in which the AI can act and create a multitude of outputs. Now, the first example here is about video games. So here is a short scene on how they envision that is being used. Everything is real time. Hey, Jen. How are you? Unfortunately, not so good. How come? I am worried about the crime around here. It's gotten bad lately. My ramen shop got caught in the crossfire. Now, in that scene, the interesting thing is that the complete dialogue is created by AI. So the conversation, you can talk with your voice to the AI. The AI is talking back to you. They gave the AI a description of the character, of the location, of the situation, so that the AI can use this information, this kind of setup, to play out all kinds of scenarios within that context. But none of the lines you have heard the NPC speak has been scripted that has been written before. Can I help? If you want to do something about this, I have heard rumors that the powerful crime lord Kuman Aoki is causing all sorts of chaos in the city. He may be the root of this violence. I'll talk to him. Where can I find him? I have heard he hangs out in the underground fight clubs on the city's east side. Another very interesting thing here is that also the facial animation, but also, of course, the voice synthesis, the sound of the voice has been done both by AI. And of course, that is very important because, first of all, that enables the game to be in all kinds of languages or even dialect that the AI can reproduce, but also that the facial expressions and the animations have a huge range in what kind of situation you create in that bar, interacting with that NPC, giving you a lot of freedom so you can create your own story. So Try there. Okay. I'll go. Be careful, Kai. Now here's another example done by the YouTuber Art of the Machine. He's using three different AIs, whispers by OpenAI to translate what you are saying into text, then ChatGPT to create the answers, and then XVA Synth to translate that back into audio that is played to you through the game. This is a Skyrim scene. What do you think of this? Let me think. Let me take a closer look at that sword. It seems to be a well-crafted iron sword with a soul gem embedded in the hilt. The enchantment on it allows the wielder to capture the souls of their enemies. As you've seen, you can speak with the NPCs and then ChatGPT is giving answers based on the knowledge about the video game, but also about in-game items or the situations that are happening right now in the video game. So that is really cool and very interactive and you can actually have a real conversation. The only downside of this process is that there is a delay because the information has to be sent to ChatGPT and ChatGPT has to create the answer. But of course, as you've seen with the NVIDIA example, if this is fully integrated and the AI is part of the video game, you don't have that delay anymore and everything can play out in real time. The next example I want to show you is about video communication and that actually has huge potential. I will talk about after this clip. The future of wireless and video communications will be 3D generated by AI. Let's take a look at how NVIDIA Maxine 3D running on the NVIDIA Grace Hopper Super Chip can enable 3D video conferencing on any device without specialized software or hardware. Starting with a standard 2D camera sensor that's in most cell phones, laptops, and webcams, and tapping into the processing power of Grace Hopper, Maxine 3D converts these 2D videos to 3D using cloud services. This brings a new dimension to video conferencing with Maxine 3D visualization, creating an enhanced sense of depth 
and presence. You can dynamically adjust the camera to see every angle in motion. Engage with others more directly with enhanced eye contact. And personalize your experience with animated avatars, stylizing them with simple text prompts. With Maxine's language capabilities, your avatar can speak in other languages, even ones you don't know. NVIDIA, AI, life means Singa, Jolu function. In NVIDIA world, SSK AI will motivate communication digits. NVIDIA Maxine 3D, together with Grace Hopper, bring immersive 3D video conferencing to anyone with a mobile device. You have seen a lot of stuff happening in that clip and you might think, well, it's just another Snapchat filter. What's the special thing about that? Well, actually, this is really huge. Now, one of the most important things here is that the AI is between the coding of the video and then the decoding of the video on the other side. So you can basically do everything with that video, not just video effects. And when you think about it, the most important part is tracking you as a person and then also what you're saying in words. But then afterwards, this information can be handled in any kind of way. For example, putting your voice into another language or you can also render your face in all kinds of ways. And this specifically is really important because, for example, you can use a bad video input when you are at a bad location, you have low resolution, you have a low compression rate, and then the video, the tracking of your person can be taken can to output a high resolution, high quality video on the other side for the person who is actually seeing you. Now, another interesting thing, when you look at the screen, you can actually see that this gives you a 3D representation of your face so that when you look at the screen from different sides, you can actually see different sides of the face. Now, one way this can be done is that you scan your face beforewards from all kinds of sides. Of course, now with the new technologies, you need a lot less input for the AI to actually understand your facial features and turn a 2D video into a 3D animation that is rendered live by the AI as a video. Now, the next example I want to show you is about advertisement, but that is also interesting for movies, TV shows, music videos, basically any kind of visual entertainment. Let's check out the clip. The world's industries are racing to realize the benefits of AI. NVIDIA and WPP are building a groundbreaking generative AI enabled content engine to enable the next evolution of the $700 billion digital advertising industry. Built on NVIDIA AI and Omniverse, this engine gives brands the ability to build and deploy highly personalized and compelling visual content faster and more efficiently than ever before. The process starts by building a physically accurate digital twin of a product using Omniverse Cloud, which connects product design data from industry standard tools. Then, WPP artists create customized and diverse virtual sets using a combination of digitized environments and generative AI tools by organizations such as Getty Images and Adobe, trained on fully licensed data using NVIDIA Picasso. combination of technologies allows WPP to build accurate photorealistic visual content and e-commerce experiences that bring new levels of realism and scale to the industry. And as you've seen, there is some amazing stuff happening in that clip. But the most important talking point from the keynote here is that the content is not just created on demand by the AI, but it is created based on the viewer and based on the viewer interest. And that is, of course, a major change. Now, of course, this is most interesting for advertisement because you want to see the product being used in an environment that speaks most to you. For example, your 
your age, your culture, your environment, the nature around you is, of course, different depending on where you live, who you are, and, of course, how you would use the product. But this is also interesting for movies, for TV shows, for all kinds of entertainment purposes. For example, think about how Netflix already in the past experimented with shows where you can decide how the show is going on. Now, imagine a show that is rendered live based on your purposes, on your specific individual needs, like your culture, your age group, your language, your subculture, things like that, and also your artistic interests. So you could say, hey, I really like that story, but I don't like this kind of Middle Ages scenario. Let's play this out in Victorian London. So this is going to be rendered in a different style for you because you enjoy that more. I think that has a huge potential and I can't wait to see the first examples, especially in video games where we can actually talk and play with these characters, actually have real interactions with NPCs who can react to you and you can actually sit at the fireplace in the middle of a fantasy forest and have cool conversations. Let me know in the comments what you think about this technology. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.